Good morning and happy Wednesday. I am in the beginning stages of a cold. I blame someone from my office who was licking door handles. Uh, she has a kid and the kid brings home sicknesses. And then, of course, maybe it's just that you're more aware of it when people are sick in the office. But of course she had to touch everything. She had to use the the big stapler that's out in the at the secretary's desk. Obviously she had to use that one all the time. Grr. So now I have it. Uh. Office sicknesses. No one likes them. Anyway. I was asked about crime scenes and the police using them to back photographers out of areas. And yes, they can do that. Now, if they're if they're doing it just to get the, a videographer out they're not using it for any other purpose you could probably challenge it but you have to remember in all the analyses you're looking at a, at a medium scrutiny for that kind of thing for police controlling their crime scene uh, it is a significant or important government interest to control a crime scene I mean, that's, that's what the police are supposed to be doing in there. They're supposed to be investigating a crime. And you have to control a crime scene to do that. So, the and, and the same, it's a medium scrutiny for conduct restrictions that impact protected speech. Those are also medium scrutiny. So if the government has a significant or important interest in it, and they're doing it in a content neutral kind of way, and they leave open ample alternative channels for you to get your message out, then guess what kids, they can do it. Now that's the test. The, the government would still have to satisfy the test. So, if you did sue them for it, then the government would have to prove that their interest in backing you out was content neutral or unrelated to speech. Depending on if they're going for a, a conduct or a time, place, and manner restriction. The government would still have to uh, would still have to prove the significant or important government interest, and they'd have to show it was content neutral in order for it to shtick. Uh oh, speaking of shtick, somebody found a shtick. J.C. Playford, um, American News and Information Services. He got he got a couple California resisting, obstructing, delaying a police officer. He caught a couple of those, and uh, he went and he tried to sue over it. And he failed pretty spectacularly. Now, does that mean that everybody will always fail? No. Does that mean that the police can move people out of a crime scene with impunity? Generally, yeah. Um, again, the police have the, the right to control their crime scene. And to determine... The extent of it, 
Like, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but there, and this is a bit of an extreme one, but there was a suspicious package at a school. And the police had the audacity to make the videographer get out of what they thought the danger zone was. And a court's gonna, a court's gonna, not gonna second guess the police officer's notion of what the safe area is because you wanted to film there. Your odds of winning that are somewhere in the slim to none range. Because a court is gonna say, well, it's not unreasonable for the police to make that decision. It's a significant or important government interest to keep citizens out of that area. Good morning. And, uh, yeah, it's reasonable for them to, to make that assumption of what the blast radius or the danger zone would be. They have a significant or important government interest in keeping people out of that range. And you can still film, you just have to film from a distance, so they're leaving ample alternative channels open. They're really not cutting off any channels of communication. They're just not letting you film in a particular spot. So, eh, you can still get whatever message you want out. There's lots of, anyway. So, yeah, and and the other the other part of the question was if you're standing there and the police move the crime scene back to include the area that you're standing in, do you have to move back or are you now part of the crime scene? Uh, no, you have to move back. The uh, the cops in that crime scene area aren't part of the crime scene, and. I don't know of any case law that would suggest that just because the police moved the boundaries of the crime scene that all of a sudden you as a person become part of it because that would be that'd be interesting that'd be a seizure and I don't think you could demand that the government seize you that'd be interesting so yeah there you go I do appreciate the question um you know, I see the I see the same the same stupidity over and over again on these auditing channels, and it just it gets really repetitious to talk about the same thing. Yes, they can trespass you. Um, yeah, you did the. Uh, oh God, we had a poll on it and everything. We, you did the auditor version of the dine and dash. Yeah, you. You made an ass out of yourself. Yeah, you wasted a secretary's time. Congratulations. You know, it's the same stuff over and over again. So I do appreciate the uh, the questions. There was another question that was uh, raised about railroad tracks. And if you could stand on the sidewalk that was crossing the railroad tracks in film... If that is a, if that is a traditional public forum, personally, I don't think it is because unlike a gray sidewalk, which you couldn't differentiate from any other sidewalk, you can differentiate normal sidewalk from sidewalk that's crossing railroad tracks because of the railroad tracks going through it and the rationale behind keeping people off of those tracks. That's a pretty significant government interest. Pretty significant. And you can move 20 feet in either direction, or 40 feet in either direction, and you'll be off of the railroad property and off of the railroad tracks and film. So even if it is government property, which it may not be, um, I have a feeling that the government could not allow you to film on the tracks if it's private property that the government has an easement for the road to cross 
then I, I would prob I would assume the analysis would be under the uh, First Amendment still, unless it is the uh, railroad company that's trying to keep you off of it. In which case, you'd have to look at the nature of the easement. But I appreciate those kinds of questions. They're fun. They're stimulating the old noggin. Anyway, my nose is going to start leaking, so I'm going to I'm going to call this one here and snot rocket on somebody's lawn. Thanks for watching. Have a great morning.